Hello guys, it's me, Longer James, here with a Frostborn video. Frostborn is a multiplayer game that is focused on its multiplayer aspects, and you won't get far in this game without a good family, which is like a four-player squad. Uh, but don't think you can't start up by yourself. Here, I'm going to show you guys some important tips that I can give you uh, that I've used and have worked out for me and my family. Uh, so hopefully this will this video will help you and your family survive. Note that these tips are mainly for beginners, but as the video progresses, it will progressively target higher leveled and more skilled players. So the first thing you want to do is in your base, uh, when you start the game, you want to clear your base, all its resources, uh, and all the enemies, and save your good stuff uh, in the provided chest. Uh, if my memory is correct, you will need to create another chest to fit everything. The next thing you want to do after you've cleaned that area out, you want to go outside and you will see this kind of like foggy area surrounding everything except for this green tree zone and this green rock zone. What you're going to want to do is start exploring the area just running around, don't even enter those areas because these zones have a higher player encounter chance. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to find this north green rock zone here, this south green tree zone here, and this red uh, place called Hellsheim. And the reason for that is because this is a uh, PvE zone where you cannot find other players. And this one and the top zone have low player chance encounters. And the reason for that is because while you're starting out, you just kind of want to learn the basics of the game. You don't you probably don't want to be killed by random people and unfortunately a lot of the community in this game are decently aggressive so you kind of do want to avoid them at least for the very very beginning just so you can get started and build up a base. After you've locked the map you want to learn where to farm which I just kind of told you guys where to go. You want to go to the north and south green zones and the red PvE zone. Uh, the difference between those is the bottom zone has a lot more wood. There's no iron to be found there. Uh, but it's pretty decent to uh, get a lot of wood, just basic for your base going. Um, the top rock zone, you want to go there because it has iron. Uh, these two zones, the green zones, have berries, which will be uh, important for a later game when you're trying to make healing salves, which are basically like the medkits in LDOE. They have the best healing factor in the game. They use five berries for those, and each one of these spirits uses um, five berries, so that's basically 15 berries just for one healing self. So as you can see, a lot of berries can be needed. Um, Hellsheim, uh, there are no chests over there, so you're not going to be able to get the medium to uh, to like the set tier two and tier three gear and weapons. Uh, but you will be able to get uh, a lot of wood, rocks, and there are still some iron in this zone as well as there's the enemies around there are a little bit spread out so you're going to have an easier time farming um, and you're just going to be able to focus more on the basic resources which you're going to want to do. Uh, this red zone also though does have a cooldown that is pretty lengthy so you're going to want to alternate between that red zone and this green zone which I recommend you going mostly to this uh, north rock zone just for the iron. Uh, you don't have to bring a lot of rocks. You can still get like three to four stacks of wood while you go there. Uh, most of the time when you go down to this bottom uh, tree zone, you're maybe getting six at a time, but the loss of iron is not worth the two extra stacks per trip. So uh, I always prefer going to that north zone. Running to these areas, uh, even though they're more expensive, but this rock zone up here costs 14 from your base. Um, and this one, uh, cost 16 from your base. From your base, I think this one costs like 8 and this one costs something in the echelon of like 11 to 12 energy. Uh, so even though you're you're spending like 4 energy or more uh, around there more per, uh, for a one-way trip to your base, uh, it's not a big deal because in this game uh, energy recharges at 1 energy per minute so it's pretty cheap. Um, and as long as you're clearing the area, getting all that experience from killing all the monsters and farming all the resources, you should be fine on energy. When you're farming these zones, try to learn as much as you can about the game, like how enemy aggro works. Uh, let me go into the zone and try to show you guys. Uh, you want to also learn their aggro ranges, uh, how you can multitask in the game to save a little bit of time, how spells work, uh, and in your hopefully rare encounters uh, in these areas, um, how, how players act. Uh, enemy aggro 
uh, for AIs uh, works pretty simply. Uh, whatever is closest to them is what uh, aggros them. Uh, weak draugrs have a shorter uh, aggro range than anything else in the game. So if you can see um, a weak draugr and you can see, you know, like a wolf or a regular draugr or anything else, a bowman, stuff like that, uh, you should sneak attack the stronger guy instead. And um, oh, I'm in trouble. You should sneak attack just the slightly stronger guy, um, and then kill that one. And hopefully the weak dragger will not aggro on you, and then that way you can sneak attack the weak dragger afterwards. Uh, sometimes you just don't want to sneak attack at all, because if the enemies are super bunched up where there's like maybe three or four of them, uh, kind of which what happened here, um, it's better to just stand up, aggro one of them, uh, pull them towards you, and then sneak attack the remaining guys uh, if possible, or however many guys you need to pull up, uh, pull away by standing up and do that trick as many times as you need to. Uh, this will also make it so that if you, you don't have to fight multiple guys at once, sorry for the lag guys, uh, this will make it so you don't have to fight multiple guys at once, which will mean you're not taking multiple hits, uh, and it will save you durability on your armor if you're wearing any. Uh, it'll also save you just food uh, in general, and, uh, and, and everything else. You can auto farm and multitask, uh, and by multitask there are only a few things you can do while you're auto farming. Uh, you can go into your backpack, eat f uh, food, or just arrange stuff. Uh, but eating food will stop you from auto farming, so that's kind of uh, pointless. But the main thing you do while you're auto farming to multitask is going into your blueprints. And you can just craft new tools while you're auto farming to save you just a little bit of time. Uh, the other thing you can do while you're auto farming is going into your inventory and switching out your spells. The way that spells work is when you cast a spell, it'll go on whatever its cooldown time is. I'll make another video on that. I have a full chart that I made. Uh, for the Discord tips uh, contest, which won, so yay for that. So the way that spells work is whenever you switch spells or if you go into a loading screen, whether that's entering a zone or entering a tomb, uh, whenever you switch those spells or do those things, it will go on a short five second cooldown and spells can cool down in the background. While you're farming these zones, you'll get a lot of experience. You should repeatedly do these zones uh, until you are level 40 to unlock all of the abilities, uh, particularly the Spirit Bowman, Healing Wave, Stun Rune, and Healing Rune. Um, these spells, I typically have them on me 90-99% uh, of the time. Um, very rarely will I use anything else. Uh, so next thing is you want to find a really good family after you've done a lot of solo farming, uh, unless you, if you haven't already found a good family that is. If you don't already have a bunch of good friends, you can find some in the Frostborn Discord. This is a multiplayer game, don't treat it like a single player game. Uh, the reason to work on your leveling up first is so that people will want to add you into their family, or so people want to join yours. If you can voice chat, make sure your family members can also voice chat, as it is a boost to communication and teamwork. Uh, make sure that your family members are typically active around the same time you are, so you might want to discuss them. Uh, with that before you even join family. They don't necessarily have to be in the same time as you, uh, time zone as you, just make sure that they're on around the same time. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys how to briefly uh, reset aggro with the bowman. So I just leave the bowman there. Uh, the bowman only has 40 health, he will die to the thing, and as you can see, uh, the enemy just leaves me alone. Uh, this is really useful for the tome and Odin's. Uh, especially when you have uh, multiple people in your party doing the same thing. Uh, so basically the cooldown will basically, if you divide it by four people, you can summon a bowman every 10 seconds. Uh, this is really useful for clearing rooms uh, with very large enemies. Uh, if you have a strong weapon that can do 40 or more damage or something like that, one of the green or blue weapons, um, you can uh, use this trick to reset enemies over and over again and get off uh, multiple uh, sneak attacks on them for more damage and use less weapon durability. After you've made a good family, please remember to discuss a family base. Uh, having four single player bases is not good. Frostborn is not a single player game. Don't play it like one. You're going to have a really bad time if somebody just raids you easily because your bases aren't connected and defending each other. Uh, 
your family members aren't your only friends by the way uh, there will be a totem that shows your neighbors uh, make sure to make friends with them uh, so that your the neighbors don't attack you uh, large nations have fallen just because the rest of the world is their enemy so it doesn't matter how strong you are in the middle if three of your neighbors all decide to uh, hate you uh, you're you're not gonna have a good time uh, once you're at the medium stage where your basic family uh, base has been set up where um, all your bases are connected your workbenches are together and you've gained enough play experience together to know how each other works, you can travel to the yellow and red zones to do tombs and get a few nails. Uh, try to make a strong hatchet and get enough maple to build a workbench to craft nails from iron and iron plates. Medium chests are better defenses than level 2 walls. Once you manufacture nails, uh, try to make as many medium chests as possible. Improved lockpicks cost a lot more. Uh, they cost some metal parts and oil, which is a lot harder than getting the materials for a strong hatchet. Uh, other workbenches to focus on would be the uh, looms. You want multiple of those just because it is really quick to get a lot of these plant fibers and cloth from killing these guys. Uh, you want at least one tanning rack between your entire family. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, you don't get a lot of uh, animal hides, uh, even if you go to the zones that have the deers and the wolves, which the red PvE zone does not have deer, so you're gonna get even less hide over there. Um, you also want one distiller, and the reason why you only need one uh, is because you're gonna need a lot of berries, and you go through them pretty quickly. Um, one, uh, five berries turns into one spear in about 10 minutes, so you're gonna drain your berry uh, reserves really fast as well as the extra five berries that you need to make a uh, healing self. Uh, and then you would also want one advanced smelter uh, as soon as you can. Uh, but in this game, it's like Adui in its early days where copper was insanely hard to get. Um, so you're not going to be using that a bunch. So again, that's why you uh, only need uh, one. And just make sure to share those uh, with your family. Once your family has all of these workbenches, you can create tier 3 armor and healing selves. After farming those green zones in the red PV zone enough to reach level 40, you should have a decent stockpile of green and maybe a couple or a few blue weapons and armor. Uh, with the runs you guys have done together so far, uh, in the tombs to get the nails and the red tree zones to get maple to get your first workbench, you guys should be able to work well enough together now to take on Odin's Sanctum. Uh, if you can do Odin's, you can basically do anything in the game. Uh, there are special events that can be spawned based on how much your f energy your family members have. Uh, it doesn't matter if one of them or all of them have uh, the energy requirement. Um, the Cursed Town event, which spawns when any one of your family members have around 70 energy or less. And the Crash Caravan event spawns around uh, when one of your members have 30 energy or less. For the Cursed Town event, uh, it's pretty uh, low leveled. You can go there pretty much with just spears. Um, but there is a boss at the very back uh, on the side of the church where you might want uh, maybe one green item or just bring one or two of your family members with you. Uh, for the Crash Caravan event, you can go do it solo, but to get everything in there, there's a lot of items. You might have to take two trips to carry everything, or you can just ask a family member to come loot with you. That's pretty much for all, everything you want to know about this game and all the tips I can give you so far. Thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you, please like, share, and subscribe to help other members of the game community. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!